Make hard, but he's soft. <laughs> This will take time. Wine. Where mind is master of the body. Let's compare the force curve of paddlers of different skill levels. This force curve is taken from an erg. It's not dissimilar to that force measured from a paddle when paddling on water. I separated the data to show a difference from the best paddler to a sub elite paddler. To go to the next level, can we improve on this force curve? Can we increase the amount of force produced early in the stroke? Can we increase the peak force produced? Can we then also maintain the force in the negative region? According to Dragon Analytics, the effective movement of the paddle depends upon the sequential movement of body parts from trunk to upper arm to forearm to hand. If you don't use your biceps, this means you don't move your forearm, which will result in a slower movement of your hand, remembering the hand holds the paddle, which means the paddle will move slower. But most people don't even use their biceps, which means if you use your biceps, the paddle will move faster. The rowing shell has better glide qualities compared to a canoe or kayak. For this type of erg, one needs to have a faster rate in order to keep the erg moving. These paddlers use an abbreviated throwing action, but both appear to be putting their body weight through the paddle, through the top arm. I won't give away the secret here as to which muscle you need to strengthen but this action would seem to be able to prolong the force in the negative region. To improve our strength in this part of the curve, we've chosen an exercise that mimics a push forward and a push down action. This strength and conditioning coach seems to have nailed that perfect push down, push forward, throw catch type action. For this part of the curve, we're looking to push down with our top arm to keep our weight on the paddle. This strength coach is becoming quite popular on this channel. Here he's showing an exercise which is well suited for that top arm to push down and keep your weight on the paddle. A rowing exercise is a great exercise to improve the strength of your bottom arm for the entire phase of the paddle propulsion stroke. Increasing the strength of the scapular muscles may help you to maintain and prolong the force in the negative curve, but I'm going to try these wide tricep kickback row exercises instead. They should be able to increase the strength of the scapular muscles as well. And to really go to the next level, I'm going to explore how I can increase more force in this region, I'm going to try to add force from the back foot as we've seen in this study from Ho 2008. Just a hunch, but we may be able to increase our body weight on the paddle. We've previously measured that we can add 3 kilos or 30 newtons of downward force to the paddle. And to ensure I have sufficient strength endurance in the back leg to produce that force, I'm going to use this exercise over many reps, except without the biomechanical markers. 
for the training program, I had every intention of lifting more than 17 kilos in the tricep kickback row exercise, but I was at the limit of my strength and willpower, and I also eliminated the very hard z-axis exercise from the previous video. And when testing the efficacy of this training program and specific action, I found that it only improved 2 minute distance, but not 30 second distance. This was an ambitious project to begin with, trying to improve in many areas, but the main focus was to increase our ability to produce, to use body weight through the middle phase of the stroke. And whilst it may have reduced the ability to use the front foot to produce force, it was certainly less taxing and required less energy, which allowed me to paddle further with the same energy.